Hey everyone, and thanks for jumping back into the Cryptoverse. Today, we're gonna to talk about Ethereum, and we're gonna be looking at the monthly average return on investment, or ROI. If you guys like the content, make sure you subscribe to the channel, give the video a thumbs up, and also check out the sale on Into the Cryptoverse Premium at intothecryptoverse.com. We're gonna keep this video somewhat short. Uh, I did wanna just go through some of the seasonality associated with Ethereum. We've talked about it at length before. But I wanted to just sort of brush up on it here so that you can uh, better understand from more of a numerical perspective where the seasonality is, is more favorable and less favorable for Ethereum. So first, we're just looking at the ROI time frame and the calculation start. So we're just going to take it throughout all of history, going all the way back to 2015. And then we're going to go through various ROI time frames and see what are the best months to buy ETH, what are the worst months to buy ETH with various time frames in mind. Again, I'm just going to be reading it off the chart. I just want you guys to see, just so you know, right, the idea, the seasonality that we've talked about is that Ethereum tends to do best in Q1 and Q2. And so the thesis would be that buying sometime like late Q4 um, and then selling, you know, half a year later would often work out, especially, right, especially in a bull market. Um, buying in the summer does not it does not always work out in the same way based on history so let's see we've talked about this a lot let's see if the data backs it up so on a 30-day time frame the best month to buy eth is january on a 30-day time frame the worst month is june okay and you can see that the cluster of of really the worst months are from june through november in terms of only a 30-day time frame but you're going to see a lot of uh, common themes here on a lot of different time frames where the summer and Q3 tends to not be so great. Uh, but as you get into December, January, February, it tends to be a lot better. If you look at a 60 day, uh, it's even more pronounced, right? So like December, January time frame tends to give you much better immediate returns on average than, than the summertime. And think about how, you know, we have oftentimes in crypto, we have a summer lull, right? We had a summer lull in 2021. We had one in 2022. I mean, I, I know that there was some movement in crypto back in July, but we all, but June was relatively boring, right? June was mostly down. Uh, yes, we did get some form of a bounce in July, but then it just got faded in August again. And so normally buying ETH in the summer with the goal of selling it only two months later doesn't really tend to work out that well. Now, it doesn't necessarily mean you're always going to lose money. I mean, in fact, this time the market's been relatively flat for the last couple of months or so. Um, and on average, the ROI is still above one. But based on, in fact, the only the only month where the 60-day ROI on average is below one is August, right? Is August. So keep that in mind because August is about to start. What that means is that on average, buying in August and then selling in October tends to be, again, on average, the worst time to do so. But then as you get closer into the end of the year, your odds tend to go up, okay? That's just at least what history shows us. Now, if we go this further out, 90 days, you're probably gonna see it more pronounced and you do, right? There's this sort of this valley in the middle where buying ETH in May, June, July, or August doesn't really tend to have the best 90-day returns, right? On average, right? I mean, look at, look at June. 1.025, July 1.126, August 0.961, September 1.097. So typically, buying during the summer lull, where prices are just relatively flat, has historically not been the best time because oftentimes in Q4, um, we see we see other things move besides Ethereum, right? Like if you think back through history, a lot of times maybe Bitcoin's moving in Q4 if it's going to the upside. But Ethereum doesn't really tend to move until Q1 or Q2, like even in a bull market. Like think about when 2021 started. Bitcoin had already gone on a parabolic rally. ETH was still at $700. I think a lot of people have to check the chart and say, wait a second, was ETH really at $700? You know, the beginning of January of, of 2001? Yeah, I know, or 2001, 2021? Yes, that was more or less where it was, right around $700. Um, and in bear markets, like 2014, 2018, and 2022 for Bitcoin, obviously Ethereum, uh, it sort of came onto the scene in 2015, but in bear markets, we often get drops in Q4. And in pre-having years, we often get drops in, in the Q3 to Q4 timeframe. So I, I thought this was interesting to look at and, and see that there's this common theme here where the summertime tends to not really give you the best returns 
whereas that December, January, February timeframe tends to give you much better returns, whether you're looking at like 30 day, 60 day or 90 day ROI. Now, if we continue down this path and look at a 100 day ROI, again, you will see May, June, July, and August tend to not be the best. And the people that are patient and, and, and sort of load up later on have historically been rewarded more so than the people that have gotten in in these in these summer months. Okay, and if you think back to last year, I mean, you know, ETH ETH went up to um, or around two thousand dollars, and and a lot of people FOMO'd in, and then as we got into Q, you know, later into Q3 and in Q4, we saw ETH drop back down. And and again, it's not to say that if you just hold on to it for the long haul, it wouldn't work out, but just looking at it on various ROI timeframes, you can see, you know, are you are you more likely or less likely to see a return over that time frame just based on the historical record? Now, a lot, what I imagine a lot of people would be interested in are one-year time frames because especially if you're in the United States, you're talking about long-term capital gains. Um, the one-year time frame shows you that December and January are best on average, right? So on average, going back throughout all of ETH's history, if you bought ETH with a goal to sell it one year later, December and January have historically been the best. The worst month was July, right? And if you think about it, think about where ETH was last July. You know, I mean, it, it's not, it, it wasn't at a very different price than what it is today. I mean, you're, you're talking um, pretty much the same price, maybe plus or minus a couple hundred dollars, but um, that's where we were last July. And, and you can see that there's this sort of this lull and in, in even the the one year ROI buying in that April, May, June, and July timeframe. But as you get further out into Q4, it tends to go up. If you go out to two years, you'll see the same type of thing, right? June and July are the worst and January and December are the best. If you go out to three years, uh, it actually is October is the best, but still June and July are the worst. And then finally four years, guess what? June and July are the worst. So it's interesting because we talked about this a lot, right? Like that that there's this seasonality associated with Ethereum for whatever reason. And it shows us that getting some at the end of the year or in Q1 has historically worked out better than buying it in the summertime on average. Now, any given year, who knows what's going to happen, right? But if you were just to repeat this process over and over and over again, then history would show that, that the summertime tends to give you the, the, the worst ROI, um, you know, selling it, whether it's, you know, 30 days, 60 days, 90 days, all the way out to four years later, um, but buying it in say late, Q, late Q4 or early Q1 tends to give you much better returns. Anyways, we're gonna wrap it up there. Thank you guys for tuning in. Make sure you subscribe, give the video a thumbs up. And again, check out the sale on Into the Cryptoverse Premium at intothecryptoverse.com. You can go through the same exercise, not only with all these other cryptocurrencies, um, but you can also do it for a lot of other indices, right? I mean, you could look at it for uh, the S&P 500 if you wanted. And you could even look at it for, say, like the Ether Bitcoin pair and, and see how does that compare? You know, are there any differences there? And, and you'll find a lot of similarities even with the Ether Bitcoin pair as well, uh, just as you do as USD, ETH USD. Anyways, I'll, I'll see you guys next time. Make sure you subscribe if you're not subscribed. Bye.